Okay, so we had a look at these questions. This was the last one we did um, together. So talk me through it. We're going to write it. Remember I said to ignore this bit, we're going to simplify our fraction. So we're going to simplify our algebraic fractions in the same way that we would simplify any numerical fraction. And how do you simplify a numerical fraction? Feel free to read any notes that you made to answer this question. Yes? Factorise and then? How do you simplify? By? Pardon? What's it called? So we factorise to... How do we simplify? That's what you said. Factorise and then? That's a method of factoring. Just, if we just have a normal fraction, um, let's say 4 twentieths, how do you simplify it? What are you actually doing? So what is the equivalent and the simplest form of this fraction? 1 fifth. How have you done that? Divided by 4. But why is... Why does that work? What have you done? Four good it's a common factor. So we actually have 1 times 4 divided by 5 times 4. And then we do what we said was cancel common factors. Okay, you're cancelling common factors. Now I went through this process and said the reason why you can do that because when we multiply like this, remember when you multiply fractions, it's the same thing as doing it's one fifth times four quarters. Yeah? So when you multiply fractions, you multiply the tops, you multiply the bottom. Okay? So what you're actually doing when you're simplifying fractions is you're trying to factorise to split it back up into the multiple that we assume has already happened. So we're trying to find the thing that got, was multiplied top and bottom. And you do that by finding a common factor. So in this case, it's not as simple as it's nice and easy with numbers, but it is the same process. You try and find the common factor, the thing that is multiplied into both, right? The numerator and the denominator. And the way that we do that is we factorise, and we need to therefore have skills to factorise a quadratic. So if we look at the top one, the x squared plus 7x subtract 18, we're looking to do the same thing as we did here, split it into two things that multiply. To make that, right, we factorise. Right, so how do we factorise that one again? So it is called a... Doing it here with my M2s and 3s. It's got three terms, so this is called a trinomial. Okay? Three parts to it. There is no common factor in any of those terms. So I can't take one common term out of all three parts and stick it outside the bracket. And when I can't do that, we then know, being a quadratic, I'm going to have to have two sets of brackets. So we know it's got to be two sets of brackets. We know that the first bits multiply to make x squared, so we know it's x and x. And then we know the numbers multiply on their own to make negative 18. Yeah? plus and minus. Exactly. Right? We know that they multiply to make a negative, and the only way to do that is if one of them is a positive and one of them is a negative. So that gives us a helping in. We know that they add together to make positive 7. And if I have a positive number and a negative number adding together and I get a positive result, we know the larger number must be positive. All right? So two numbers that multiply to make 18 that would add up to make 7. So it's going to be 9 and 2. So 9 times 2 make 18, 
one of them is positive, one is negative, we know the larger one must be positive. So that must be positive 9, negative 2. So we have x add 9, x subtract 2. So that's the, the numerator factorised. Now we've got to do the denominator. So if we look at this denominator, 2x squared, subtract x, subtract 6, again, three terms, so it's a trinomial. trinomial, there's no common term again, no common factor in any of those, so I have to have two sets of brackets, however, this case, what's slightly different about it? Got two x squared rather than just the one. Now, that actually is still easy enough to deal with because there is only one way of making 2x squared and that's to have 2x times x. So that's quite nice because if it's 2x squared, 3x squared, 5x squared, well any prime number x squared, it has to be like that. However, if it was 6x squared, it could be 6 and 1, 2 and 3, so there's lots more options. Well, we've got that. That's a starting point. Um, so we, we've said we've got two options here. We can either do a trial and error approach now, which might be all right for this one, or we try splitting the middle term, which is what Alessio was talking about. All right, which way do we want to do it? Split in the middle term. Split in the middle term. That's a, a kind, of, kind of much more kind of, um, you know it's going to happen. So let's have a look. So we've got 2x squared, subtract x minus it. Anyone want to remind me about how to split the middle term? We do a times c. So 2 times the negative 6 gives me <coughs> negative 12. <coughs> then what? So on this one, we've, we needed to find 9 times negative 2, and then the 7 was 9 plus negative 2. Not quite the same when we've got a 2x squared, but once we've done the 2 times the 6, we now have to find... Not quite. It's kind of along the right line. Still multiply to make negative 12 instead of negative 6, but add to make... Well, what's x? The 1. So we've got 1x. It adds to make how many x's we have. So remember, this is a negative 1x. So now, instead of up here it was multiplied to make 18, when I've got a something x squared, I multiply first, and now I'm looking for something that multiplies to make negative 12, but still adds up to make the middle term. So what would that be? So I guess what multiplies to make 12? Three and four. 12 times 1, 3 times 4, 6 times 2. I've got a list. Which one's it going to be? 4 and negative. Or negative so 3, three and, and 4. Negative Which? Uh, so it's going to be. Yeah, so we've got adds to make negative 1, so it must be negative 4 plus 3. <coughs> right? Oh, no, no. So now I split the middle term using those numbers, 2x squared, subtract 4x, plus 3x, minus 6, put my lines through, I have to do that, that's what I did. Factorise each side, so I end up with, I factorise this bit, what do I get? Okay, so factorise it, I've got, is there common factors here? So I've got 2 and x, and in the brackets would be x minus 2. Remember what I said about take the clues? What's going to be on the other side? X plus 2. Not x plus 2. X minus 2. We're going to take that tip, so then we know it's going to be plus the 3. Because 3 times x minus 2 makes 3x minus 2. Yeah? How do you know if you're doing 4 again? 
Mm. Because they multiply to make 12 yeah. and add to make 1. What do I do at this stage then? We factorise again, and the common factor this time is x minus 2. So I take the x minus 2, and then I've got the 2x and the plus 3 is the... So that is what we have. So up here, look, I've got the 2x already, so that's the plus 3 and the x minus 2. The three x, the two x plus three x. No, where it's uh, here. If I swap up. those around. No, no, no. Up. Again, instead of doing uh, negative four plus three, doing three minus four. That well, that would make this the other way around as well, wouldn't no. it? It makes plus which. No, is the answer. So. Um, I'm going to finish this, but I'm going to come back to your point, because I think it's an important one that you know not to worry. Um, <coughs> but just to go back to finish this question off then, uh, what do we do now at this stage? Well, I've got that as the numerator now. That is the denominator. So let's um, just rewrite it. You can see, so it's now x plus 9 x minus 2, all divided by 2x plus 3, and x minus 2. I'm happy because I've got a common factor of x minus 2, so that I can cancel out common factors. So I'm left with x plus 9 and 2x plus 3. And what do I do next? What? What was the word I gave you? You've already simplified. <coughs> I gave you a four letter word. So it's not what you're thinking. Stop. Stop. There you go. We stop at that point because we've already factorised. And we remember what we said we cannot cross the x's out. We can't cancel the three and the nine. We have to look for common factors, and they're not factorizable anymore, we've done the factorization, we've cancelled the common factor, we stop. Unless we can further factorize and cancel out more common factors, but if we could, we probably should have done that earlier. That meant we didn't fully factorize earlier. Right, I just want to um, take on from what Bradley was saying. So, just have a, let me know if you want to go back in a bit, but we had 2x squared minus x, what was it, minus, minus 6. six. So I then said that was minus 12, because we did the 2 times 6. We worked out that that was 3 times 4. I think I wrote it as, I split the middle term as 2x squared minus 4x, plus 3x, because that makes the minus x, the minus 1x, and then it was the minus 6, and I split it like that, yeah? Got that, but you know what I'm talking about? Now Bradley asked a very good question, which was, what if we did the other way in instead? So we've got 2x squared, and we did plus 3x, is just what you're meaning, yeah? And the minus 4x, what if I did it that way round? Would it change anything? Well, A, we're hoping it shouldn't, right? Because otherwise that means there's two possible answers and we don't want that. But does it change it? So we've already done this one and we factorised and got 2x and x minus 2. And then we have 3 and x minus 2. Well, let's see what happens if we do it this way around. Um, what happens if we wrote that way? So if I factorise that, I get what? X. Okay. And then this one would be plus it's got to be a plus. And what do you notice? 
So look, I've got the 2x plus 3 oh, as yeah. the outside bits and the x minus 2. If I do it the other way around, I just get it the other way around. I've got the 2x plus 3 inside, the x minus 2 on the outside. Okay? Um, now, obviously, I made a decision up here to put it that way around for a reason. I didn't communicate that with you. But could you maybe think about, look at those two options and think, well, what, what decision did Mr. Potts make to put it that way around and not that way? What do you think? Uh, because that works, um, it might be easy to see. But how did I know that was going to be easy to see? What, what can you look at and say, that makes sense? Uh, Aaron, what do you think? Of, 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 of each other. Yeah. Do you notice that I put the 4 with the 2, and I put the 6 with the 3. Three. Okay, it just made sense to put it that way round. If I put it this way round, uh, I've got the two and the. I mean, it's fine. You still end up with the same answer. It's absolutely not an issue. And actually, four and six, that's fine because I've got a factor of two in there. But just the first way just looked right to me to start with. As long as you know it doesn't matter, you still get to the same answer. That's all that matters. Okay. So that was just a recap on factorization which we've done. Right, what I wanted to move on to is what happens when you have to divide. Um, so we've got division of fractions there and what happens when we want to add fractions and that kind of thing. Okay. So I want to go through those two examples with you. So should we start with, uh, should we do question eight? So, when you look at that, what do you think you're going to do first? Simplify both equations. Try and simplify both sides first. I would pick you up on one point. You said simplify both equations. Why, why do we not even have one equation? Oh, because there's no equals. There's no equal sign. Yeah. So we, we're simplifying just fractions, expressions. So we're going to try and simplify. Right. So, which one should we try and simplify? Do you think there's going to be any simplification here? No. no. So I can kind of leave that one be. I've got 2x minus 2, and I've got x plus 5, that's it. But what about the, this side then? What could I do? So x squared minus 4x plus 3. Hopefully with practice we get quicker at doing this. So I can jump straight into factorised form. Anyone able to do that this day? Go on. Would it be x minus 3 and x minus 1? You don't think it would be that? No. Unless he says he thinks it is. Why don't you think it would be that? I think it would be x, um, it would be x minus 3, uh, x, when it be plus 1 because you have to find But if they multiply to make a positive at the end, they're either both positives or both negatives. So you can't be minus and plus. And actually, I think he's right. It's a positive 3 at the end, so they must both be positive or negative. We've got a negative in the middle, so they must both be negative. So two things, multiply to make 3, has to be 3 and 1, that's our only option. Do they both add to make negative 4? Yeah. The negative 3 and 1. So yeah, he's gone straight there. That's good. Right. Uh, so that's the top, that's the numerator done, that side. What about the denominator? So let's have a look at this. So I'm going to <coughs> use my space carefully. So I've got 2x squared plus 13x plus 15. What am I going to have to do with this one? Split the middle term. So I've got it started. So 2 times 15 makes 
there two. Two things, multiply to make 30 and add to make 13. So we've got 30 is 1 times 30. I always say, you can't think, but just start writing things out. So 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times... Oh, I'm kind of already there, aren't I? So, what do we think? If I did 10x plus 3x, make sense? So my split would be 2x squared plus 10x plus 3x plus 15. And again, can you see why I wrote it the way I wrote it? Yes. Yeah. So this then becomes... 2x and x plus 5. And we already know that the brackets are going to have to be x plus 5, don't we? So it's going to be plus 3. So if I take this, this one here and put it underneath, so I've got, that would give me 2x plus 3 and x plus 3. Now, does anything cancel out? No. So we can't simplify it instead. However, if I put it alongside, if I do the divide by, and then I've got x minus 3, x minus 1, divided by 2x plus 3, x plus 5, okay? I'm just going to put brackets around here just because I'm going to need them. All right. Now it's back to basic fractions. How do you divide one fraction by another? Go on, I don't like it, but I know you use it. So, what do you do? Keep, change the sign, flip the sign. Okay, so start to be aware of how space is an issue. So I'm going to keep the first one, so 2x minus 2 divided by x plus 5. I'm going to multiply by instead of divide, and then I'm going to flip the second one. So I've got 2x plus 3, x plus 5, all divided by x minus 3, x minus 1. Okay. Did he pause for a sec to write that down? Yeah. So, I'll record now. But yeah, when you multiply, we've already said, if you multiply just a basic fraction, uh, what is three quarters multiplied by two fifths multiplied <coughs> by one ninth? How do you do it? Multiplication fractions, you just multiply all the numerators and you multiply all the denominators. Remember we went through the cross cancellation thing we called it? But actually it's just because you can write it in any order like I said, I can actually cancel any numerator with any denominator as long as it's multiplication. So the 9 cancels with the 3, making 1 and... Three. The two cancels with the four, making one and two. Okay. And then I just multiply. So one, one, and one makes one. And two times five times three makes good. Okay. So I've done that. I can do that with numbers. So I can do that with algebra. So what have I got here? Well. There's a multiplication there, but there's also a multiplication in the middle there, isn't there? So I can cancel any numerator 
with any denominator. Yeah? So which ones can we cancel and why? So the x plus 5 is a numerator and it is a denominator so it can get cancelled. So, there we are. So, what are we left with? We're left with 2x subtract 2 times 2x add 3, all divided by x subtract 3 and x subtract 1. Is there any other cancellation that can be done? Question, do I need to expand the brackets to give my final answer? So simplify fully. Expanded brackets or factorised form, doesn't matter. Again, I was, I was chatting with my M2s um, just now about how these two are. They're not, one's not simpler than the other, they're just different forms. But um, if I go from 5x plus 2x to 7x, I have simplified because I've reduced the number of terms. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do any of that by expanding the brackets, so there's no point. I don't need to do any more work. But does that make sense? Any yes. particular questions on anything we did there? There was a lot to it. It's a tough, long question that you need to keep concentration level that. Yeah? All right. So I would like to do the addition, but I, I'm guessing you would like to go back and to question seven, which is another division, and just practice that same process with this one. Yeah? So try, try that question. Try and do what we've just applied. Look at the notes that we've just made. I'll put those still on the board so you can look at you. Yes. So on this one I said was finished, but actually I had a little think and oh, I've, I've probably been a bit to it. And could anyone spot where there is more factorization that could be done? Uh, right. uh, x squared minus 4. Wait. Back on the initial one, question on the eight. Initial one. Can you see where I haven't factorized fully that maybe um, the 2x minus 2? Yeah, do you notice here that the 2x minus 2, that could be factorised again. So actually, if I factorise just this bit here, that gives me 2 lots of x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. That doesn't factorise, but now it's all over x minus 3 and x minus 1. Have I got another common factor? Yes. Have I've got an x minus one? Whoa. So actually, I missed that. Whoa. Right. So now my final answer is even more simple. Okay. And we are all right with leaving it as two times two x plus three, all divided by x minus three. And I know that must be it because unless there is another factor of x minus three, there's no other common factor. Okay. So. Let's have a look at the other one that you were doing. I'll do it at the end. We've got five minutes and you can, you can add it on after you write it down. Um, so this one, again it's a division, so we've got to go through the process. If we factorise, can we factorise this one? There is a bit of factorization that can be done. The, no. the numerator can be factorized to three, three x minus x plus two, sorry, all divided by x minus four. I will put that in bracket. Then uh, divide by factorize this bottom one was nice and easy. Just x and x minus four. That's nice. Look. On top, x plus 2 and 2x plus 5. Spot that? I think you had 2x plus 10. Yeah. Alright, again there's no cancellation at the moment. Um,
but we've still got to do another step, which is division becomes multiplication. So we've got 3 times x plus 2 all over x minus 4. And then we have to times by, and then this goes on top, x times x minus 4 divided by x plus 2 and 2x plus 5. So now we've got lots to do. So we've got an x plus 2 cancels with an x plus 2. An x minus 4 cancels with an x minus 4. So we're left with 3x on top over 2x plus 5. <coughs> nice and simple. Yeah. 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 Guys, stop the chat in a sec. Just want to go through this. So um, we did it very quick. Let's just check everyone knows how to factorise that. So we did 2 times 10 makes 20. Two things multiply to make 20, add to make 9. So that's the 5 times 4. So I'm going to have 2x squared plus 4x plus 5x plus 10. All right, splitting it, that gives me 2x and x plus 2 plus 5 and x plus 2. So factorising again gives me 2x plus 5 times x plus 2. So that's why I got that one. Right. Okay. So you can see how it's very nice, it's much quicker, much easier when you can factorise quickly. So that kind of practising of that. Everyone written down what they need there? No? Well... Does everyone make sense? Any other questions on that? Anyone sort of think, I don't know where that came from? All right. Stop recording.